That's on me. Um, what a great evening and some amazing stories. And um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. And I don't know I, why these situations make me so nervous, but so I have some some written words down, um, and I'd like to tell you guys a story of, of kind of my journey, because I think it's kind of relevant to today's climate and sports and in wrestling. So, from the time I was a little girl, all I wanted to be was a wrestler, but I had no idea that there was a difference between amateur and pro wrestling. To me, amateur wrestling was something you did in order to one day graduate to the skill level of pro, you know, kid logic. So, while I played tennis and ran track, my heart was telling me that if I had this wild dream to be a wrestler, then I had to join my high school wrestling team. The problem was that there wasn't a, girl, a girls' wrestling team at my school. There wasn't a girls' wrestling team in our section in our state. As a matter of fact, there wasn't a girls' wrestling team in the entire state of New York. So, just to give it a little context, and I'm speaking from the time before the internet, for those in the room that remember that. The only states that have begun to entertain female participa participation were a few select schools, mostly in, in the Midwest, like Mount St. Louis. And at that time, if you were a girl like myself that wanted to wrestle, you had to wrestle with boys. So, in high school, the winter sports sign-up sheet was passed around. I wrote my name at the top, as I did every sports season, took a deep breath, I took the plunge, and I checked the box under boys wrestling. The next thing I knew, I found myself being called right into the principal's office. So I was terrified. Our school sports director sat me down and said, I noticed that you made a mistake on the sports sign-up sheet. You checked a box under the boys sports column. And so I timidly said, yes. Knowing full well that I wanted to do this, perhaps more than anything else I've ever wanted to do in my life. So the sports director leaned into me and said, yes, you made a mistake? And I took one big, hard swallow, and I said, yeah, I made a mistake. Just like that, I chickened out. I freaked, and so I chose winter track instead. So fast forward to 1997, the year that Dolly the Sheep was cloned and Harry Potter was published. And here comes the winter sports sign-up sheet again. I got clammy and cold as it moved from one student to student, heading my way to my desk. And finally as that sheet was placed in front of me, I wrote my name, took another deep breath, and checked boys wrestling. And soon I found myself again in the principal's office. And I was faced with the exact same conversation. So, I noticed, young lady, that you made a mistake on your sign-up sheet. You checked boys wrestling. I started to break out in a sweat again. This time, I just nodded. Our athletic director asked, did you mean to check girls' winter track? And I felt the deja vu of the moment falling over me again. But I mustered every last drop of courage I had and I said, no. So our athletic director, looking a little perplexed, said, no, uh, did you mean girls basketball? And I looked at him and I said, no, I want to wrestle. And this was one of the biggest decisions of my life. Now, some people were receptive. Some people were awesome. They were proud of me and encouraging, but not everybody. Some people were angry including my own parents. They were hateful and judgmental, called me attention-seeking, questioned my motives. And I learned that the cost of going after something you truly believe in is huge. But what I can say is when I got past the noise, I was able to revel in the magic of wrestling, the camaraderie of my teammates, the respect they had for me when I just kept showing up, failing over and over again, but getting back up to try. Jim said, showing up. My team supported me and treated me as an equal. And I stood in awe of a sport that taught connection, leadership, perseverance, and humility. 
So, my husband, who also was a wrestler for many years in WWE, and you guys might know him better as the rated R superstar, Edge. So, my husband and I often share with each other about our experiences growing up and around wrestling, being fans, and, and our travels. And when trying to describe to him the major differences in my experience as a woman in wrestling, I said this. So Adam, when you were growing up, you dreamed of wrestling at heart. Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair. And as a young man, that was always possible for you. If you made it to WWE, you could wrestle heroes. You did. But for me, even if I made it to WWE, even if I worked my damnedest and became the best wrestler in the world, I knew it was never in the cards to wrestle Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Ted DiBiase, or Kurt Hennig, simply because I'm a woman. Now, it's not all drab. Fast forward to today, and boy, have we made some progress. Because of the sacrifice and work of the generations before them, this generation of young women has more female heroes than ever. They will grow up seeing Wonder Women, like Natalia Neidhart, who represents the most gritty, amazing, wonderful person inside and outside of the ring that I'm so lucky to call my best friend, who traveled so far to be here tonight, who was beside my side, was by my side, two days after my dad passed away, just to make me a meal and give me a hug. It's women like this. <laughs> women like Natty are finally gonna start getting their due. Girls like Tessa Blanchard, Charlotte Flair, and these young fans are gonna know that if they become a wrestler, it is on the table to touch the stars. So I want to encourage us to continue to advocate for the growth of women in sports, and particularly women in wrestling. Incredible organizations like Sally Roberts' Wrestle Like a Girl are working to sanction women's wrestling in every single U.S. state because our girls deserve the opportunity to earn a scholarship at Division I school. They deserve the chance to compete with, a fellow, with fellow dream chasers and have a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There's so many other women that deserve the recognition that I'm blessed to receive tonight. Women that paved the way in amateur and pro wrestling for myself and for my daughters, the next generation. And that's why I wanna thank the Dan Gable Museum for their forward thinking and for the acknowledgement and representation of women in wrestling. And I know that we are just getting started. So I wanted to close tonight by sharing a beautiful quote by one of the most stellar human beings I've had the pleasure of knowing, Brett the Hitman Hart. Brett sent me a lovely text and said these words, you always know great people by the company they keep. And I think the same could be said for our congregation here of gritty warriors. And Charlie Fez gave me another wonderful quote as we were talking about the values and um, the experiences that, that we felt in wrestling and, and things that Lou felt. And Charlie said to me something that just stuck. In wrestling, we stick by our friends. And to me, that's what this museum is all about. Brothers, sisters, we get each other. That's special. Thank you.